Hey, uh, Kevin with Emergency Medicine. I'm here to talk about adnoc oxygenation or no DSAT or pre-oxygenation prior to intubation, whatever you want to call it. This is for the emergency department, for the adult emergency department. This is our protocol. This is our habit. This is this is how we do things. So uh, let's start with uh, let's start with the. Uh, uh, the nasal cannula first. So when the patient comes in, this is mainly level one, level two, and or a patient that you think is going to get intubated. Um, immediately, they need the they need the the cannula and or the whatever you want to call it, cannula prong supply. All right, you got two options here. So this green cannula here does a lot higher flow. Um, it's the best, in my opinion, for, for super high flow. Um, this, not so much, but it'll work. Um, I don't have one of these uh, sitting out, but I'll just tell you. The entitled CO2 cannula that's got the tab on it that measures entitled CO2 is not amenable for pre-oxygenation. Okay, and should not be used. The orifice of that is, is extremely small and you can't get a high flow rate through that. Please do not put these, please do not use that cannula to pre-oxygenate a patient. Okay, so whether you choose you opt for this or this, you're gonna put the cannula on. All right, for the respiratory therapist watching this, I'm not gonna bore you with how to put a cannula on. I'm just gonna show you what is not acceptable. And that's this. Okay, that's a no-go. And you think, well, nobody would do that. Uh, no, it happens. It happens quite frequently. You know, we're watching all the videotape of these resuscitations. So, you know, that works. The, the best way that I see that works is to put it behind the patient's head and cinch it up. If you opt to loop it under their chin, if they've got a C-collar on, the minute you pull the C-collar off, all this falls off. So if you cinch it behind their head like this, and just leave it, this is a fail safe. It works every time. You're gonna hook it up, a minimum six liters a minute, but it, uh, it, as much as they will tolerate. The cannula stays on throughout the entire procedure until you get the ET tube uh, taped in, this stays on. This stays on if you're doing back valve mass ventilation, this should just stay on period until you get a cuff tube below the cords at the highest rate that the patient will absolutely tolerate. Okay, let's cover the mask, non-rebreather mask. Um, a lot of our patients were not able to put the loop under their head. You'll get an improper fit like how, you know, I'll see patients with the mask is up over their eye. Make sure this is fitting well. If you could ask somebody to help you, just have somebody hold their finger like this the flow rate on this should be as absolutely high as you can go. Like in the flow meter, the, the green ball is, is bouncing. Um, this stays on until it is removed by the procedure list to introduce the laryngoscope blade in the mouth. Okay, so this concept of apneic oxygenation or no DSAT or, or whatever, uh, is something we've been using here in the department for almost 10 years. And it, this is a key concept in how we engineer safety into intubation. We're intubating 700 or so patients a year. We have a very high first pass success rate. And we also have a high first pass success rate without uh, hypoxia or desaturation. And a lot of that is directly related to this. This, this is something that is mandatory that we do and, it's, and it falls upon it falls mainly on the respiratory therapist to get this right. So I hope this was informative and go out there, execute flawlessly, and we appreciate what you do.